what is good back doing something a bit different this time uh we're gonna do a learning sagat video if you saw my learning kage video back when he came out this is gonna be a lot of the same uh this is more gonna be an overview video we are not gonna dive very deep into how sagat works this is gonna be a video showing uh my general process thought process of playing this character it's gonna be uh I'm going to be showing some bread and butter combos and I'm going to show how to use V-Trigger. Mostly V-Trigger 2 because I'll be honest, I haven't really used V-Trigger 1 and like V-Trigger 2 seems like the viable one you use in tournament. Uh, so that's the one I've been also, that's the one I'm playing around with and how, and we're going to talk about how you can use that. So this is going to be more of an introductory video to like, if you want to pick up Saget, you can skip through this video. I'm going to put some, uh, uh, yeah, things on the screen right now saying like why you need to jump to in the video to check out what you want to learn but i'll try to keep this as short as possible but we're going to talk about a lot of stuff in this video i usually like to keep my videos short but this is going to be a longer one i'm going to try to keep it short <laughs> so the reason i want to make this video first of all is because i play a lot of Saget. like i, I haven't been playing him a lot lately uh, because i've been trying to focus more on urian again but there was a period of time where I played a lot of Saget. I have a... Yeah, I've played a lot of this character. And I I love this character to bits. This is one of my favorite characters in Street Fighter V. I, I can't explain how much joy I have playing this character. But I'm going to be honest with you here from the start. If you're here to play Saget because you want to do really well in tournaments. Or you want to do really well on ranked. I would not touch this character with a 10 foot pole. If I were to be a tournament player. Even... I haven't played this character that much on ranked. I can imagine when you get high up in level, this character is going to be hell to play on ranked. I'm going to be straight honest with you on that. That's going to be a lot of work. You're going to put in a lot of work to make this character work on ranked. Uh, because this character has a slew of bad matchups and he doesn't really win anything. Like, there's not really any matchup where I can think with like where, where I'm with Sagat, like, oh, Sagat wins this. This is a good matchup for Saget. I'll be honest. Most of his matchups are either 5-5 or worse. There's a lot of matchups with Saget where I'm like, oh, this is really fun to play. Saget is a character you play if you want to have fun. If you want to feel very satisfied while playing. You really feel like you're the best player in the world when you win with Saget. You really feel like you're the, the hottest shit. Like, you feel like you are so much better than your opponent when you win with Saget. That's the reason you play this character. To feel superior. <laughs> To have fun. Because this character is a lot of fun. But there's also times where you just want to beat your head in against the wall instead of playing a match. Like, as example, Bison versus Saget is hell for Saget. It's absolutely the worst. I hate that matchup with, like, so much. With a passion. I think I would rather spend the 10 minutes it takes to play that matchup hitting my head against the wall. Straight up. And like, that's not like, and that isn't that bad if you're a tournament player, but you're going to see a lot of uh, di uh, dictate on ranked. I'm just going to say that to you, uh, especially when you get high up in ranked. But in tournament, Sagat also does really well, uh, really poorly against Karen and Rashid, two characters that there is very good for tournament play at the moment. So yeah, just as a heads up, if you're here to learn Sagat because you think this might be your tournament character, this might be your character to hit Grandmaster with. Good luck. That's going to be a tough journey. I'm sorry to be negative from the start here, but that's like, you're going to have a rough. You're going to have a rough life. <laughs> it is possible to, I, I know people that hit Master with Sagat. I don't think I've seen a Grandmaster Sagat in Europe. But yeah, that's of course Grandmaster Sagat around the world. Bonchan doing really well. I see, and I see other streamers do really well with Sagat, so you know, you know, it's not impossible. It's just very hard. Just know that. But, but that's it. Let's dive right into learning about Saget and learn. Let's start with talking about his buttons. So, let's start with talking about his buttons. Saget actually has some really good uh, poking buttons. Where they lack is kind of long range combo confirms. Is where Saget's buttons kind of are a bit iffy. But he has some, but they... They're very, very situational. But let's start with these lights. Um, Saget, these two buttons, really good range. 
five framer, <clears throat> five framer, and four framer. So fast buttons, good range. These buttons are very often used, uh, especially stand light kick, used like this. You can press, you can press forward with it uh, very easily. Um, even even if it doesn't combo at max range, this is very good. Like let's say you're locked in the corner, like, like I just am. This is a very safe way to push out of the corner, like putting out a fire frame and fireball. You get a lot of space even on block for this. So that's like that's a very good way to use stand light kick, um, stand light punch. Doesn't really have the same effect because um, at a further ranges, the button will whiff. But if you get close, it'll still hit. This button is mostly used as a uh, meaty starter because of its very it's very plus on block. So it's very good to start, you know, to do it like a. We're gonna get into meaties and combos later, but you would often see uh, Sagat players do stand light punch into uh, stand medium punch because that's a really good frame trap. That also it's it's a very plus button into another very plus button so it's a that's very good that's that's something that Sagat has that is very good so that's how you use those two buttons then he has his uh, cross light light punch his only his only uh, free framer this button very short range it is insanely short range range on this button you have to be almost all up in their face for it to hit so it's very hard to uh, to hit confirm it for anything because it doesn't really it doesn't combo only into stuff into itself so like it's very hard to wake up will crouch and then confirm or very hard to like you know if someone is stashing at you it's very hard to use your free frame as a checkup because it's down back and this and it's very short range and it's only and it only really works as a um, combo into combo tool interrupt into combo tool on uh, on with because you get stuff like that so that's like his his only free framer. It's probably the worst free framer in the game, I'll be honest. Like coming from Urian into Sagat, this was very hard to deal with because crouch jab, uh, Urian's crouch jab, even even after the nerves, is way better than this. And that's a four framer. Then we have the cross light kick. Good range, good range for a uh, light kick. I think it's four frames. Um, and yeah, just like you don't really get a lot of it, but. It's a good, like, get off me, you know, like, a low poke, get off me move. Just, um, that's mostly why I would see it. But it doesn't really, like, I don't... I'm not, oh, it does combo into, yeah. Into light uh, punch, cross light punch, but I think that's it. So, yeah. So that's, like, his lights. Um, jump, light punch, not really worth anything. Jump, uh, jump, uh, light kick is his cross up move. This is how he gets a cross up. That's a, this is a very normal cross up combo. Whatever, we're gonna get into combo later. But yeah, that's his cross up button. <laughs> um, then mediums. This button, it's use. Very plus on block. This button is a good approach button because, like, um, it combos into the cards medium K, uh, punch, which then combos into DP, hard DP. So it's a very good. Uh, it's a very good hit confirm plus on it's plus three on block so like um where is it got it's it's very good to like approach you can be very very annoying as a saget player force people to block a lot and if they um oh shit if you're really skilled if you're really showing off you can do you can do stuff like that but most of the time you'll just um So like as you can see, you can be very ah man, can't get the DP out. You can be very, you can actually be very, a uh, very good pressure with Sagat. But the problem with like why you don't see Sagat plus just walk forward, do this all the time, is walk speed. That's why you won't see Sagat players be absolute bullies. Uh, it's because of his slow walk speed. So a lot of characters will be able to just like back off from your forward moving pressure, and with punish. Because it, the button doesn't have like it has decent range, but it's not that good. But it's a good, it's a good, it's a, it's it feels good to use this button because it's if it's plus three on block and it's uh, it's easy to combo into one hit. Um. So yeah, that's how you usually would use that button. Crouch medium punch, very good range, very very good range. Um, 
You usually see people use this in either combos, but oh, you can also use this as the Stein Light Kick as a like a move forward pressure tool, and it's more you're more like it guarantees that the fireball will hit, but it's also slow on startup. So like the chance that you can get counter hit using this, like like these two buttons almost like it looks like they almost have the same range. There's a ch higher chance this one will be counted. But people use this a lot is they usually put it out. And as they put it out, they are offering a... Uh, actually, I think it's medium medium kick uh, knee. So what I'm doing is on hit... Oh, shit. That was a bit too much buffering. <laughs> uh, they would do this. So if people run into your medium punch, that comes out. So it's a way of like keeping people off you. And can make... Like if you're in the corner and you put this out, just... You can buffer a knee with it, and then like if they walk into your button, yeah, you are very much out of the corner. It's got free, and I think uh, max range. Now just to be sure of it, I think max max range. If they just walk forward, block. Yeah, uh, okay, it's a plus free, so like like it can be safe. You're minus, but like the range you are, oh, the range you put at means that. You're not really going to be punished for it. I doubt you're going to be punished for it. So that's how you normally use uh, the crouch, uh, crouch medium punch. So now for one of his best uh, tools in neutral for spacing. For like feeling out where you need to stand on screen. The stand medium kick. This button is a decent poke. It's a decent range poke. Like it has a decent range. Like good poke. I'd say this is a really good poke button. Pretty fast, good range, very frustrating, hard to whiff punish. You can whiff punish it if you're on point, but hard to whiff punish. But the real... Uh, why this button is extremely good for Sagat is because it's a good range checker. So because when we talk about like where Sagat can stand on screen, he can stand far away and do his fireball game. But he can also do a fireball game closer. We can use this button as kind of like a, a, a way to see... How far we are away from our opponent. Because uh, if we are hitting him, hitting him with a, just around the toes here. We are in a range where you can't really react to a fireball in, the, in this range. You can't. like It's hard to react to a fireball. So you can throw out this poke. You can throw out a fireball sometimes. You can really frustrate your opponent, opponent with these pokes. You can even like if you feel like it do something a bit more. Like a, a really good counter poke like this one. Or try to fish for a counter, uh, cross counter with this one. But... um. So that's where like the 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 strength comes. Like you know where you're standing on screen compared to your opponent if you are fishing for this to hit. And on the plus side, if your opponent starts getting annoyed and wanting to jump at you, jump at you like annoyed people often do in this game. Um, there is kind of this. Um, it's the perfect range for anti ADP uh, light, and because of how it works. You can kind of poke out, and even if they jump as you're poking out, the chances of uh, I did it later, but um, if you control your, you can DP. You can put out the poke, and you can DP. Ah, I could have got that DP there. So that's like kind of the strange of this. Ah, that's way too late. That's because I did the button after he jumped. If you do the button after he jumped, you kind of messed up. But if you do the button and then he jumps. You either get that or you can DP him. So that's that's the strength of this move. That's why this button is so good for Sagat's neutral and spacing. It's because it can kind of pinpoint, you know, a range where you can throw out fireballs sometimes. They'll be unsafe if he do a preemptive jump. Uh, at least the bottom one. But that's hard to react to. Uh, you have a nice poke and you know that your anti is going to do pretty, really well. Your anti DP is going to do really well. So that so if you feel like you're on point, that range is actually really hard to deal with and your opponent gets forced to like do something stupid like dashing forward. Of course, I'm not saying you should walk forward and do this. Like, I don't know. That's my work at lower levels. Just walk forward and do this until and then they start jumping at you. But like if they dash at you and you aren't ready, you're going to get punished. If they dash in behind it or something like that. So like... This kind of marks the first like good range where I like to stand with Saget. Around where like the toes hit. This is like a good range for Saget. 
you have to be on point and be ready for jumps and be ready for dashes. But if you if you can't be ready for that, his range is very hard to deal with for opponents. Also, just like one last note on it. If you're playing against a character like Karen, this strategy won't work. Because Karen's movement speed will absolutely destroy you. Most other characters you kinda get like a you can kind of control because of the movement speed. But characters like Young Seko and Karen, you have a hard time controlling uh, their movement with this poke because of how fast they are. They are race cars. Compared to Sagat, like Sagat moves backwards so slowly, like you have to do back dashes. His back dash is pretty good. But yeah. So it's harder to use against uh, against high movement speed characters, but it can be used. Uh, then the last button. Let's just restart. The last button. Uh, medium. The last medium button. Crouch me kick. This button, it has its use. It's not the best medium kick by any chance. Like it's, it's it doesn't have that far range. Uh, I think like like range like that. I don't even think like a car. Yeah, it doesn't even come into fireball. So like, it causes uh, yeah. Um, what's it called? Ex works, but and high works, but like. It's not that great. Why people use this often is um, if if they know the opponent is walking backwards, they can oh, they can do stuff like that. I'm pretty sure people hit confirm it too. I'm pretty sure I've seen people hit confirm this button too, uh, a lot. So that's like where this button is strength is. Like you can kind of hit confirm it. It's a low. Can I? Uh, I'm not gonna try that now. And um, you can use it like if you know opponent's gonna shimmy you, you can do that. So that's kind of like, it's not the best low. But it's a low that combos into something. And you can use it for certain situations like if people are shimmying you, if you know people are gonna walk backwards. So, not the best crush medium kick, not the best low. But it has its uses. Then we come to his hard punch, uh, his hard buttons. Hard punch and crouch hard punch, I'll be honest. I don't really use these buttons a lot. I see people use them. I see Bonchan use them. I see uh, our streamers use them. Use it, and I get why they use it. Like, it's a, it's a good poke, and I feel like it's very easy to hit confirm into super. So I get why people use this button. I see uh, sometimes um, Bonchan throw this button out in the corner, um, and I'm pretty sure the reason he does it is because if he gets a counter hit for some reason. The opponent is at like the other side of the screen. So like if you're in the corner and you can just like put this out, you you, you shouldn't fish with it and just like keep pressing it because then you're gonna get whiff punished. But like you can like one time in the corner, like, okay, is he gonna if I am I gonna get anything? Boop. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm out of the corner now. Sick. That's how I see this button being used. This button just pretty good poke. That's a good poke. It's slow, but it's uh, beefy and you can hit confirm it into soup. I've seen people do it. And then, probably is uh, one of his better pokes in neutral. The stand hard kick. This button is so fun to use. Uh, mostly because of its range. You see, you will see a lot of people walk into it. This is your often you also your V trigger startup like stuff like that. You'll get you'll get a lot of use out of it that way. And it's very hard to whiff punish. It's very hard. Like you can do this, and people will have a hard time with punishing it. The correct way to punish this if P if you see this again starting to be a Beyblade, is to just sweep. Uh, because if they crouch, the button will not hit at further ranges like this. They have to be very close for it to hit. So if you start spinning like a Beyblade, just sweep. Or crouch, like in Ryu's case, case, he can do crouch medium kick into EX Fireball or something like that to get a knockdown. But, very good poke. And uh, you can really use it to check people with. Also, a uh, very decent anti-air. Very, it's a good anti-air. Um, oh, I think I have, we have that recording, so. That can get you cross counter, so you can get stuff like that. So yeah, very, it's a good anti-air. It's a good anti-air if you're ready to use it. I feel like, um, we'll still get... You use stand hard kick for anti as when uh, you're ready for the jump. When you're sitting and you know he's gonna jump, you use stand hard kick. You use DP when you aren't ready and you're surprised by a jump and you can just 
DP because of the invincibility. It gives you some more frames to actually react to the jump. So that's how you use it. I wouldn't use this like, oh no, he's jumping on me. Panic, stand hard kick. You're probably going to get hit. But if you know, okay, he's going to jump in a minute because I can sense he's really annoyed. Stand hard kick. Whereas, oh no, he jumped on me. I don't know what to do. Then you DP. That's kind of how you use to get uh, NCS. And um, sweep. The last one, it's a sweep. Some people use it to get into V-Trigger. Uh, makes the, the activation safe. Gives you, a few, gives, gives you a few plus frames. But it's a sweep. Like, I don't know. That's not a lot to it. It has decent range. You can use it to punish when people sweep you. But it's a sweep. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not that much to it. So, let's end this button section on uh, his special moves, or special normals. Uh, first we have Ford uh, Hard Punch. Ford Hard Punch is an overhead. It's a cool overhead, it looks cool. It's pretty fast. Um, can be hard to react to. I've definitely, like, you know, taken some rounds by ending on an overhead because people don't really see it coming. Um, so yeah, it's it's an overhead. It's pretty good, but it's there's nothing special about it. Then we have his two... Um, Forward medium kick and forward hard kick. We're going to get into the special properties of them uh, a bit later. But first, let's just take them individually. Uh, forward medium kick. It's a low. Uh, it doesn't combo on hit. No matter what you try to combo into. It's plus three. As you can see, that's why it won't combo. Because you don't have any free framer. So on hit, we get a mix up. You know, we are in, we are in the face and we're plus three. So like we can either go for it that or go for a throw so like it's pretty good on hit but like you know it would be nice if it combo but we can only hope um on counter hit it's it combos sorry it's plus five it combos oh my god come on there we go as you can see it combos oh my bad uh but yeah it combos it's it's decent like um, I can't remember how minus it is, but you barely see it. Minus two. So, like, yeah, yeah it's not even punishable. Uh, you're in the face, minus two, but yeah. You don't really see it that much. Like, like it's it's fine. It's a, it's a good low. Like, a lot, not a lot of people see it coming, but the problem with it is, is it's really slow. Like, it has a lot of recovery. So, like, if you whiff it, they have a long time to punish you. Um, and even if they don't punish you and you go for it and they just you know they jump because that's what happens in this game sometimes people jump um they have like it's hard to um punish the jumping and you'll most likely get hit um so like it's an all right low you can you again like overhead you can use it to catch people by surprise but it's not a one it's not a move you can spam in neutral and hope to get away with it because most of the time you'll get punished for it but you know you can throw it in there either to like Surprise your opponent to make him think about something else, or maybe as a finisher. Um, yeah. Let me make it to um, forward hard kick. Mostly seen in uh, combos. It can be used as an anti air, um, but you have to be really. Like this anti air, you have to be ready to use. This one, you have to be really ready to use. But I've seen. Um, oh, this is this is old, old tech now. Uh, this is when Sagat just came out, so like it's a, it's a year old take. I don't I don't think I've ever seen like really anybody use it, but he actually has an option select with this uh, kick. So, as you know, you do uh, a low fireball by doing a quarter circle kick, right? And I'll, that will always come out, right? But say your opponent, uh, you have to have the right spacing for it. But say your opponent jumps and you do a uh, and you do a fireball while there's still a fireball on the screen. The fireball won't come out because there's already a fireball on the screen. So he'll do a forward hard kick instead. Um, so if your opponent jumps the first fireball, um, and you do another fireball, you can yeah like let's say you do a fireball right. If the opponent blocks it, you do another fireball. Or if he gets hit, you do another fireball. But if your opponent jumps and you, on the second fireball, he'll do a forward hard kick instead. So that's kind of like an option select you can use. So like, I see if I can, you see, I'm doing this exact same input. So like, and that doesn't come out. Ah, 
But yeah. So that's a bit of an option select, isn't it? I'm doing the same thing. And then you can do that. So like... That's an option select with it. I barely see it used, but that's like... That's the thing you can do with that uh, hard kick. So now you know. Um, lastly, and why these normals are extra interesting with Sagat is... Sagat can cancel into his special moves from his forward hard... Um, forward medium kick and forward hard kick so they get extra range so like let's say you do a light punch dp it has this range let's say you do a forward medium kick cancel into light punch dp it gets more range this is that is this is mostly visible like it's easy to see if you go full screen and like do a hard kick knee and then we go back and oh. you can see he moves a lot further um as of recording and i'm not really sure i've there's some there's some rumors that goes around like that uh that doing because like the cancel window is um uh, later on the medium kick one you go longer by doing the cancel with medium kick than the hard kick but hard kick you can do the cancel faster but i'm not really sure if that's true they did some patch changes uh but yeah I'm not really sure about that, but there's some about it. But this is uh, this is a um, tool you have to understand how to use with Sagat. So what I do to do this input, just to really cut it out, I do the input of the forward medium kick, and then as I'm doing this input, I do a, a special input. So like forward medium kick into fireball. So I do forward medium kick and then a fireball motion. And then also... And it works with all these special moves. Also EX. And um, this is useful both in neutral. So like, let's say your opponent does a jump in or a low fireball like that. It's, Sagat can't hit him if he does hard kick, uh, hard punch DP. But if he did, but if he does cancel, he might be able to hit him. Um, you will see this in high level play and it's sick. So that's like the special functions functions of uh, these two moves, and uh, you also both see it in neutral and in combos. Um, we'll talk a bit about that later, but there is combo that's re combos that require you to be able to do this uh, this special unique move cancel. And uh, yeah, that's about it for that's it for buttons. I think we covered everything I wanted to talk about with buttons. Uh, this took some time. <laughs> But let's move on to uh, bread and butter combos and that sort now. Okay, let's talk about combos. So Sagat as a character, he doesn't really have any like really flashy combos as such. Like, like he's not a flashy combo character, but he's like, they, they're beefy. He has some really beefy combos that does a lot of damage. And like, um, how do I say, he has one flashy combo in the corner, but that's that's about it. Like, there's not a lot to it. So let's just like, let's go over his bread and butters, like some, some combos you need to know and like, They'll help you get started with playing the character, and like they're good to to get. They are good to have. So like, first of all, the most classic one. Just there we go. Medium punch, stand medium punch, crash medium punch, um, DP, whatever. Like into whatever special move you want. Every special move works. Knee, fireball, they all they all work, and it's just very versatile. You know, like if you want damage without meter, you can do that. If you want a uh, corner carry, you can do that. If you want a safe, no uh, good knockdown into a follow up, you can do that. So like, very, very versatile combo, and like you, you see it used. Like you know, like jump in, it's nice. You know, like stand medium punch pl plus three on blocks. So you know, it's a good starter to a combo. Like even if he if he blocks, it's a good pressure tool. Like. Just like a very versatile combo. Then, for his lights, he has uh, that. Again, like, very versatile combo because, like, stand light punch. Plus three on block two, fast. Into the light kick, and again, it works into everything. Oh. Uh, oh. And also into the... So, yeah. Gives the same properties. Uh, where you would use this except of the um, stand medium punch combo is like if you're doing cross up. That's the best place I can tell you. 
Oh, yeah. You get the idea. That's a frame starter. <laughs> um, so, like, that's two very bread and butter, easy to uh, use combos. Like, they work. They work everywhere. The light one is very good for, you know, like, if you're interrupting, you can, like... It's very good for interrupting if they're dashing at you or stuff like that. It's good for the cross-up. That's uh, This is your go-to cross-up uh, combo. Um, yeah. Because, like, if you cross-up. Just, just to make the point sure. If you cross-up, it doesn't work. If you want to go for, like, the... The damage, the real, like, you know, dam the real damage, you go for this combo. And again, because it ends in stand medium punch, everything works. And, like, as you can see, it's starting to get... It's beefy damage for not really doing a lot. Um, oh, I even added the wrong combo. <laughs> uh, so, like, that's a very typical jump in if you confirm the, that it's... a. Uh, Hit on jump in. Very, right, that's the beefy uh, damage combos. Um, again, and and for some reason, like uh, not always. Like if it hits like that, a medium punch won't hit. So like you'll have to, you can combo like that. Well, this is mostly a thing is on jump in. So like if you jump in from further away, if you if you try to do, um, oh that's too close. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> it, again, it wouldn't reach. So, that's where um, you'd see that use. But yeah, that's kind of like... That's just basic combos. Let's let's move to the corner. Um, so, his corner combo. I like this combo. It's cool. But like this is like his bread and butter damage in the corner combo. You'll often see, you know... Um, Bonchan in the round with this one. So, like... Good damage, 375 damage. Like, it's good damage, really cool. Um, if you do it like this, just to show you. Oh, shit. The DP won't come out in time, so. So, that, that is a range specification. To, if from, up, from out here, if you're buffering, it works. Um, the spacing you get from doing... Oh, my bad. The spacing you get from doing the... Um, Stand hard kick makes it so it works, but just so you know, this doesn't work if you just do like this. Actually, that might work. It works. No mind. You can't just do all the way close up. But yeah, that's a really cool combo in the corner. And besides that, like you know, like it's just kind of the normal stuff. Um, let's talk about how his V skill works. I don't. Want, I won't make a specific V skill part uh, because like his V skill is mostly for combos. So like, like so, and like what this does is instead of having to use a um, a bar for juggles, like like uh, the way this is something to do with how the juggle system works in Street Fighter. But like, uh, oftentimes you won't be able to do special into special, even though it seems like it, because um, there's limitations on them. But those limitations are kind of lifted if you use, uh, for example, a bar, and like Sagat's uh, V skill is one of those things. So like. Before, uh, let's just do it without. Um, before, if we did the, the combo again. Like, even though it seems like it would hit, it doesn't hit because we don't use bar. But. It works without the bar. Uh, so that's kind of like where you see, that's how Sagat's V skill works. And it kind of carries us into both. And that's kind of like. All the users for his V skill. Like, you know, it gives that extra juggle point without having to use bar. And, like, it also makes the hitbox on the DP a bit better. So, for anti and stuff like that. And, like, if you hit them, just to cover it real quick, if you hit them here, it gives full screen. So you can get it up again. So, like, oftentimes you'll see this into this. Um, so, yeah. And that kind of carries us into the next point that is um, use of EX meter. So. His most damaging e e damaging EX combo um, is, uh, and it's a bit hard. It's actually pretty hard compared to the rest of Sagat stuff. But like, this is most damaging EX combo. Like, just like what you're seeing me do there, do there is uh, a step kick. 
the EXDP. If you don't do it, oh, it's range specific, but like if you do, um, you need to do that. If you don't do that, it won't hit. Sorry for the hard cut, but uh, I realized as I was editing this video that I completely forgot to talk about uh, how to do super combos and how to do um, cross counter combos. So let's just cover them real quick. Let's. Uh, Sagat doesn't really have in, have a lot of cross counter combos. Um, most of his cross counters don't really lead into a lot of damage. Like uh, he has this, which like you know you have to uh, hit with only this, the the further hitbox. If you get the double hit, it doesn't cross counter, which you know is that's not bad. Like it's still, and then you have that, but like you can still get combos from it. But um, it's not cross counter combos. Then he has this cross counter again. Doesn't give you anything unless it's in the corner, um, but it's still not really the thing to do. It's only really his his DP punish and his go to cross count move. You saw me doing it before. Is a forward hard kick, and what you do after doing a forward hard kick to punish a DP is forward hard kick, forward hard kick in stand light uh, stand light kick. It's hard to speak and do it at the same time. Forward hard kick, forward hard kick, stand light kick, DP or whatever special move you want to cancel. The stand like you can too. As I said, they can cancel into everything. So that's like his cross counters. That's like his cross counter combo. Um, he doesn't really have like... He doesn't have the best cross counters. He has... He has... Like, that's a good combo. That's a really good cross counter combo. DP punish. But that's kind of all he, he has. Um, and then last thing, thing I wanted to talk about is... If you... Uh, I didn't talk about super combos at all. <laughs> I kind of forgot... Um, but super combos is just every combo you can do, you cancel into a DP, and from the DP you do cancel, you cancel into the super. Uh, every DP can cancel into a super unless it's uh, the DP hits shallow. That mostly happens on anti air. Uh, light light punch DP on anti air can hit shallow, so it won't cancel into super. But besides that, all DPs cancel into super. So like. Let's say you want to do a super combo. Let's combine our DP punish with a super combo. So cross counter into a super punish. So like we do. And that's a lot of damage, by the way. Of oh, 56. Uh, and again, like every every possible way you think you can do like a DP, you can cast it into a super, except for when it hits shadow. And every DP does it like me light punch if it's a clean hit like so and like every other way you can think of um i like like i think even like fireballs if you do straight yeah you can do stuff like that so like i don't think you can cancel me no you can't eh. but yeah dps and fireballs you can cancel into super and as we talked about before, is light kick and down medium punch, which you end most combos in, can cancel into all special moves. So you can get a bit creative uh, with what you want to do. Let's talk about meaties. So um, there's not really a lot to it because Shagat doesn't have a lot of like knockdown situations where he's plus because the character is not designed like that. But he has, he has one very specific one where like he can use that and like. He also has some in the corner, but like it's mostly the same you do. So the one you do with Sagat is you do a stand uh, light punch into stand medium punch. That is like the basic um, midi situation. So like um, because it's a frame trap, but also like if you if they wake up with it, um, they you can continue into stand medium punch into cross medium punch, and then like it's an easy confirm. But like, let's go to midi first, like where like where you can get midis and how you can continue them uh, for set play. And then let's go over like his, uh, his frame trap normals, because they kind of, you know, they I, I see they, them as like, you know, two things of the same coin, even though they're not quite. But yeah, so like the most standard knockdown situation is this. Something like that. Um, but, you know, it, it takes a good chunk. Uh, just for reference, I think you saw it in India, but like he does wake up, stand, light punch. But um, yeah, so that's like, that's like, you know, like if you want um, follow up, that's what you do. 
Uh, you do you do ex fireball. That's how you get a follow up knockdown. We talk about it in the B and B section also. Uh, but yeah, so that works with just like everything, right? It works with uh, quick get up. Works with uh, back quick get up. You just have to like it's it's the same thing, but like uh, you know you just have to do the other, do the other stuff. But yeah, that's like, that's the basic, that's the go-to um, meaty button. That is the stand light punch, because if you're up close, stand light punch is a really good plus three move, and it's a really good tick thrower. So like, if they do this, they also have to like, you know, you can also throw them if they decide to block. But then we move into like the whole meaty area. And let's move into the meaty area now. So like, um, uh, do I have a, oh my God, I have a lot of, um, what's this one? Okay, let's talk about medies because, um, like, they are a bit more interesting with Zagat than the... Uh, no, not medies, sorry, the, the frame frame traps than the meaty setups. Because, like, Zagat doesn't have a lot of meaty stuff, in my opinion. He has a few things. Uh, but, like, if you if you know any more, let me know in the comments. I'm Please, please educate the people. Please educate me. I just, you know, I made this guide because, you know, people have been asking me to do it. So I'm doing it. Anyway, that's rambling on the... That's a side note. Uh, meaties, uh, sorry, frame traps. The reason we do stand light punch on wake up is if they block, you get, um, you get this. You get this counter hit combo. And like, and all in all, it's a really good, it's a really good, like, uh, me, uh, frame trap button, meaty button, because even if you throw, they get messed up. Uh, the only downside to it is if they, uh, crouch and you're too far away, they'll go under, but like, if you move closer, but yeah, that's the worst part about it. Is the whole like, if you're not if you aren't close enough, it's not that good if they're crouching. But that's it's like a small thing. So like like that's why like stand light punches is a go to startup. You know if you want to go for a frame try. If you're playing against the opponent that presses a lot of buttons, it's good. You get everything from it you need. But um, a way to really um, piss off an opponent is uh, just walk forward. Because like this, in my opinion, this is a need to hit confirm. Let's say, um, let's just take it off, uh, take it off this and set counter hit on and then set guard to random. This is a, this is an easy hit confirm in my opinion. So like, that's a good way, like you can move forward and like do this. I think I showed this earlier, but yeah. Like that, you can you can do it with that too. Like, just hit. I love hit confirms. If you haven't figured it out yet, I love hit confirms. It's just oh, I love them so much. But yeah, that's besides the point. But yeah, so that's like like that's just most normal like meaty stuff. Um, I should mention of a back throw. Um, you can get a plus three situation, so like you do this. Damn. I got just I just got blown up. <laughs> Why the hell did he have wake up on? Whatever. Um I can't Oh my god, frame like I can't remember if I was standing or crouching. I think it's crouching then. Uh crouch. Oh crouching. Yeah, plus three. If you, it's fair. It's it's hard to see. It's very fast, but um, if from that range, if they are like just crouching after a back throw, this meat gives you um, plus three. Um, so that's like um, it's a good way to get pressure, like start pressure. And it's very rare to see that from. Uh, did that say plus? No, it said plus four. That's said plus four, yeah, yeah, okay. It's not even plus three, it's plus four. I forgot about that. Uh, but yeah. So I should mention that too. But like that's kinda like, you know, his like that's like the the basic of like you wanna get started with doing medies and like your frame traps with the get. That's what you do. This button is insane for it, this button is insane for it. Um you can't just do um And the reason we just don't do crouch uh, stand medium punch into cross, uh, 
crouch medium punch. Uh, first of all, it's a hard to, but I think, yeah, you can't do it. Crouch medium punch is too slow. Doesn't work. So you need to, you need this step. Just a small quick one here to end it on. Uh, I said that EX Fireball is the only one you really can do special move ender if you want like um, follow up uh, from a knockdown. But it's not completely true. You got you got this thing too. Um, so like he's waking up with stand light punch, and like you can of course like if you want if you want to make it into set play you can do something like this. You can probably even get stunned off it, but like. Um, it's of course like I feel like it's pretty. Um, it's not that good because like if they back it up, you don't really get anything. But then it, it's back it up, and you still have you like you you get a lot of space for yourself, so it's not that bad. And if they decide to uh, block, oh my bad. If they decide to. Block after we turn this thing off. It's zero on block. So like, like, it's not the best, but it's something, and you can use it, and it's it's pretty safe to use, and there's not really any downside. So if like if you want space on the screen, it's a thing. Um, it pushes pretty far. And it's safe to do. Like, there's not really any downside to doing it. Besides, you can catch an EXDP. But, you know, that's it. But, yeah, that's all. That's really everything he has in terms of, like, the basic MIDI stuff, you know? Like, like this is the basic, like, buttons for MIDIs. This is, like, how you get his frame traps going. Like, all this stuff on Wake Up, where, you're, like, it's good to know. Okay, let's talk about his V-Triggers. Um, I'll be straight honest here from the start. I think his V trigger run one is really bad. It's not really bad. It's just a combo V trigger. It's a combo V trigger that costs three bars. In my head, that doesn't make sense. Like, like, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cover the V trigger because all like from everything I've researched researched this for a while, and everything I find is just people doing fancy combos with V trigger one. So if you want to learn some combos, just Google Saget V Trigger 1 on Google and you can go find some combos. I don't want to cover it because it I'm um, uh, it's just it's just combos. It's uh, like it, uh, there's nothing really interesting about it in my opinions. And it's just like and not only that, but like you you're having a free bar V Trigger that only does combos. And it's like if you don't hit the v, free bar V Trigger how are you going to make a comeback? It just does, doesn't seem like a good comeback V-Trigger. So instead, I'm going to spend uh, more time just talking about V-Trigger 2. Because V-Trigger 2 is the more competitive V-Trigger. It's the V-Trigger you see most people use uh, in tournaments. I don't think I've ever seen a Sagat use V-Trigger 1 in tournament. Maybe once. Um, and the reason is, it's a 2-bar V-Trigger. It gives uh, armor when you do this. And it gives combos, so um, it's you can use it for all kinds of stuff. Um, you can use it to fish. Uh, this is also unblockable. You can use this to fish um, in neutral. Um, sometimes you get a hit, sometimes you don't. You, there's a lot of not a lot of risk, a lot of reward from it. Like if we do this, and you just come out into this, that's 285 damage for nothing. It's uncounted right now, but like still. So, like, if you're playing against the Karen or any, like, of those, like, characters that has a lot of good pokes, you can just put it out there if they hit a poke. Damage. That's how you can use it. You can use it uh, against characters, you know, like... Um, how can you also use it? You can use it just to uh, as a combo thing. So, like, as you talked about before, cross-counter combos. Um, that is this combo right here. Uh, how is it you do it again? It is like this. And uh, so we do stuff like that. So like that's like it gives you easy activations into your V trigger. You can even like like 
do more than that. Like, I, w I don't think I would because of the scaling, but like, if you really want some corner carry, you can do that if you really want to. Um, I have done it before. I'm not going to sit here and try and do it. But yeah, so like, it's just easy. It's a two bar V trigger. It makes it possible for you to use V reversal because it's two bars. Um, it can make your comebacks. And it's very easy to convert into because of how Cicat works. Um, and it also has one more very interesting property. And for people who don't know, like like the full, like how you'd use the V-Trigger. Uh, let's say I get a hit in neutral, like so like. Something like that. And like it gives good corner carry. And it, like it's just like good corner carry for V-Trigger for a single, uh, for a two bar V-Trigger. And it just does well in that regard um also like it combos in like there's a lot so that has a lot of really far reaching feature cancel moves so like that cancel it and you can do stuff like that it doesn't hit from full max range but like it hits for most like so um so like he has a got he has a lot of good v uh that isn't V-Trigger cancelable, I just did it on accident. He has a lot of moves that are V-Trigger cancelable. Um, that are pretty good. And also, like, one last thing. Sagat has a uh, a mix-up with this V-Trigger. And you see it go around a lot. Uh, being used a lot. in, uh, And it's it's a good mix-up. It's a good mix-up. So, like, um, how you do it, I just make sure he's set to wake up with a button. Yes, so he wakes up with stand jab. Yeah. So the mix up is you can either go left or right side by um, doing a shallow hit of of this. You can do a shallow hit of it. Um, and then you can and then you do a knee afterwards. Uh, afterwards. The important part of it is you wait. Um, you have to wait with doing the knee. People think they have to do it fast, where you actually have to get, do it kind of slow. So I'll, I'll show you how it looks, and then we can talk about later how, like, you, uh, what you need to do to hit, hit it. So we do forward, hard, uh, forward V-trigger. So this is on one side. If you wanted to hit on the other side. And that's how it looks if you hit it on the uh, other side. So the key part to it is actually, like, you have to delay it a bit it's about the like people think they need to do it fast but the problem if you do it fast you hit rio in the air so uh, what you do is you just wait a little bit uh, it's, uh, it's, you just have to feel it out but my key for a rule of thumb is just like when this is hitting just that's about the time i'm waiting so like and if you do it fast so fast that's what happens so it's like just enough for him to get over uh and i just do normal medium kick Knee. I don't do cancelable knee, medium kick, or anything special. It's just a straight up normal tiger knee. That's all I do. And no medium kick uh, cancel or hard kick cancel. And then you end up on the other side, and you can either and you can jab, and then you can throw him or something like that. And if he, uh, and if let's do back recovery because it looks a bit different. But if they do back recovery instead of uh, quick kick, get up. Um, Oh shit. If they do quick get up, uh, sorry, back recovery instead of quick get up. It's like that, but then now, now you're not in range. So just, just be wary of that. You're not in range after that. So that's a thing to take into mind if they do back recovery. And this is also a way to blow up a lot of the gets, if you didn't know. It's by doing the back recovery. They still get a hit of the stand light, uh, stand light punch. What you need to do instead, if they do back recovery, just so you also have that covered. What thing you can do? Like stuff like that. There we go. So that's like a combo you can do instead. You can also do... Uh, I'm pretty sure you can do this. Just let me... Before I... Just to make sure I don't feel your bullshit. Yeah, you can also do that. <laughs> so like, that's that's just V-Trigger 2. It's... It's not like a Urian V-Trigger. I'll happily admit that uh, GV trigger or something like that. But it has its uses and it has a pretty cool mix-up. Um, 
but most of the time, like, it's a solid V trigger that can give you a comeback if you know how to use it. But also, like, it's not hugely important. So don't be afraid to use V reversal. That is probably the number one thing that was hard for me to do coming from uh, coming from Urian. It's getting used to use, using V reversals. It's very hard when you normally use Urian that you also you you have to remember you also have a tool that is V reversals and that can both be used offensively and defensively. And it's pretty damn good. But yeah, that's all about V-Triggers. I want to end the video on talking a bit about strategy. And I'm not saying I have the D strategy for playing Sagat. I'm not saying this is the best strategy for playing Sagat. Uh, but this is what I do. And this is what the thoughts I go through. Where, and this is my default strategy when playing Sagat, if you can say it like that. You know, like, like not... Everything is gonna work in every matchup. You know, some things, some moves, some uh, and some spacing works in one matchup, and it doesn't work in another matchup. But this is my if I don't know the matchup, this is my default what I try to do in the match until I learn and get better at it. So you know, you can take this and like you can use it as your training wheel wheels. Think about these stuff as I think about it. The best thing you can do is also just straight think yourself. Thinking is the best way to improve in these kind of games is just thinking i got hit by that what can i do to not get hit by it stuff like that but this is like my uh go-to strategy for playing neutral and playing like yeah playing neutral is to get where i want to be on the screen and what i'm thinking and what i'm looking for so let's get about it so i already mentioned um the stand medium kick range uh, earlier in the video and like that's of course one of the strategies you can be around here but against characters, uh, against players that like to dash a lot, or characters that has a f uh, fast movement speed, this is a uh, hard distance to stay at because they can dash in behind your stand medium uh, medium kick. Um, they can, uh, and if it's fast, um, characters with fast moving moving speed, they can walk a bit closer, and you can get a cross up on me, which like depend like I'm not that good at cross up uh, DP yet. Um, if you can do it, it's easier to deal with it but if you can't it's it's a bit hard to deal with so that's why in some matchups i don't like this range um when that's the case i move a big a bit back like around here this spacing let's actually move the other character to this corner maybe it's easy for you guys to see then but like around here not too far away not too close like around here i like this spacing um especially like this is where i want like to stand when i'm playing the birdie and geef matchup uh, because they can't really deal that well with five balls from this range, and if they try to jump, uh, the hard punch DP covers most of the screen between us. It covers most of the space, so like if they jump forward, they're gonna jump straight into it. Um, so that's this is where I like to stand, and they can't really do a lot about it. So like for those kind of characters, also like the real matchup, I like to stand on the spacing, um, pro plasma, and that's like you know. That's the general uh, strategy I have to get is like, I like to do a, a fireball game. I like to do the fireball game. I think that's very fun. And Saget does it very well. He's a fundamentally strong character. So a poking slash fireball game is very good with him. Uh, also from this range, you can do this and it will hit. So like, um, you just have to move a tad bit closer, but like it can, it can hit from that range. Um, so like, just a very fundamental poking fireball game and see if they jump. Um, which is what makes this character a lot of fun because, like, there's not a lot of characters in the game that actually have this kind of fundamental gameplay. So that's why I enjoy doing it when I finally play the character. Um, so, yeah. That's kind of like the strategy I like to use and, like, how I like to play as a get. Um, also, this covers a lot of the screen in this range. Like, just... This spacing, like if you don't, if you don't, if you're not feeling comfortable staying this close, and you should definitely force yourself to try to be comfortable around this spacing here. Um, I like to move a bit back and stand here, like not too far back. If you're standing around here, your fireballs won't have a chance of hitting anything. You and like there's so much you give your opponent so much room to also just jump in and get out, uh, uh, and you give you give them too much space uh, around here. You don't get the opponent space. The opponent can move forward without like having to work around either your fireballs. If they jump and uh, you are ready for it, they jump right into a DP. So you don't give them enough space to actually do a lot. But it's still more comfortable than standing in here. 
But again, this spacing is really good for Sagat for all the reasons I mentioned earlier in the video. But this spacing is also pretty damn good. And uh, you, you can deal with a lot of stuff and you can be very prepared from it. But yeah. So like, also, as you kind of have seen, Sagat needs to kind of be fundamentally strong in this way that like he has to have this fireball game. He has to have this uh, uh, poking game because it's hard to get combo started with Sagat. Like a jump in, Sagat's jump in is not very good. Um, his hard kick, it doesn't hit very far down. His jump back is it's not bad, but it's not good either. It's it mostly just depends on like the jump hard kick. The jump hard kick hitbox is so poor. So like most, so it's very easy to anti. Yeah? So you kind of have to have this very grounded game, even against fireball characters. Uh, it's very hard to jump in. So getting a full combo with Sagat can be kind of hard. And the best way to really get it done is if you're around this range and you kind of just dash in, dash in. So like uh, around here. So like, and that's kind of like like it's not good to dash with Sagat. It's not like he doesn't have a good dash. It's not a bad dash, but it's not a good dash either. But like, you just have to... Sometimes you just have to do it to remind your opponent that you have it. And um, maybe they're ready and you'll get punished. If they aren't ready, you get a combo, which is rare with Zagat. Uh, I'll usually dash in with Standlight Punch too, just to be sure. So like, that's kind of my thing. Like, I stand around this range here, try to choke out the opponent Plasma and stuff like that. Then if I feel like he's getting annoyed... I'll sometimes dash in because he's not expecting it. I'll maybe go try to move a bit closer and then dash in. Um, just to, you know, like, keep him keep him on his toes. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of like, that's that's all there is to kind of my strategy with Sagat. Um, I play this character for fun. It's not like a character I main of any deal, but I thought I would share the knowledge I've gained over the time. And you can definitely use this as a starting strategy and like this can start making you think. But uh, before ending the video, I definitely recommend you check out other streamers. I know Arthur Mesok, uh is an American Sagat. He streams a lot and he streams Sagat a lot. And he is very good at the character. I've watched a lot of his streams to prepare myself for like, like even though I feel like I know this character decently well, it's good to get confirmation by watching another guy Besides spawn chain and stuff that, you know, you are doing some stuff that other people are doing. Uh, that like, So it is probably pretty decent with the character. But yeah, if you want to play, if you want to watch a, uh, some streamers that is that talks English. So you can ask them questions about the character. I'd recommend you going to Automatic. Uh, or you go to Piano Densetsu. I think he started playing a bit of uh, Akuma. But those are two content creators. I, well, I that's probably also get players out there that streams. And I'm sorry, I don't mention you at the end. But this is the two guys I've been watching that is American. Oh well, they speak English, and um, I, I've been, yeah, you know, I've been watching them to like understand if like, just to you know, suck up a bit extra knowledge for this video. And of course, there's also Bonchan. Bonchan streams a lot. Like those are free content creators. I recommend you watching if you want to watch a bit more about how they go about matchup strategies and stuff like that but this is just like a training wheel strategy you can start using and uh, you can evolve on it if you want but that is everything i have for this video oh my god this became a very long video thank you thank you thank you if you are watching this end right here i don't know no matter how much you've watched the watch of this video i thank you so much for watching some of it i hope you learned something and i hope you liked the video and um, all i can say is you know if you watched this far and you're watching the video Give it a like, subscribe, please. Uh, that would be really kind of you. I've put a lot of info effort into this video. Um, and that's it. That's all. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the view. I appreciate. Uh, I hope, and I really hope you learned something. There's no fun in doing this if I'm if you're not like learning anything. But yeah, that's all for this time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.